If you happen to be from Philadelphia or just want to teach about the Lombard Street riot, here's the context you need and how the lesson is organized. In 1842, racial tensions were extremely high in Philadelphia. The state of Pennsylvania had been an early leader in the abolition movement, which attracted both freed blacks and runaway slaves, which drove large increases in the black population of Philadelphia. Prior to 1838, black men had been allowed to vote, but this right was stripped away that year with a constitutional amendment. That same year, Philadelphia Hall opened up as a meeting place for abolitionist discussions, but only four days after it opened, it was burned to the ground by a white mob. The hall was only a short walk away from Independence Hall, where both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were drafted and signed, and yet it was ruthlessly burned to the ground to avoid further expansion of freedom. By 1842, there had been multiple other instances of racial violence in the city, and the stage was now set for another. In South Philadelphia, populations of both black neighborhoods and Irish Catholic neighborhoods were ballooning. These groups shared the bottom rungs of the social hierarchy and competed directly for jobs and housing. During a march celebrating the 8th anniversary of the end of slavery in the British West Indies between 5th and 8th Street on Lombard, a vicious mob of white Irish Catholics attacked the parade, beating black Philadelphians and burning homes, businesses, and churches. The initial attack grew into a three-day-long riot with continued violence and arson. Eventually, the local militia regained control of the city and rioters were arrested. Unfortunately, however, nearly all of the rioters were found not guilty and simply released. Only a few received any punishment, which amounted to a slap on the wrist. In 2005, a high school history class researched the riot and applied to the city for a historical marker to be installed on Lombard Street commemorating the event. The city accepted the application and a marker was installed. The text, however, was written largely in passive voice, removing the perpetrators of the violence from the story. Buildings were not destroyed by fire, they were burned down by a racist mob. Use this lesson to examine the impact of passive and active voice in the telling of history. During this lesson, you will first present a slide deck providing context on the riot, we will then lead an exploration on Lombard Street on Google Maps Street View. If students have their own laptops, they can do the exploration individually, and if not, you can lead it on a projector screen. You'll be able to find a landmark mentioned in the newspaper article as the starting point of the riot, Mother Bethel Church. Though it is not the same structure, it is on the same exact spot it was in 1842. Then students will read a newspaper article recounting the riot from 1842 in a Lancaster newspaper. Next, students will read an article about the creation of the historical marker. Finally, students will use a graphic organizer to rewrite the text of the historical marker, adding details they find important and shifting from passive to active voice. The goal of this lesson is to expose to your students a piece of difficult history, hopefully from their local community, and highlight the importance of framing and the words we use to tell our difficult histories.